Welcome to Therapy Explain, where we explain, demystify, and destigmatize mental health and mental health treatment. My name is Denise Planner. I'm a licensed therapist and owner and clinical director of a group practice here in California that tailors to the mental health needs of BIPOC adults. But here on YouTube, I am the host of this channel, which aims to help disperse information about mental health because we feel that you have the right to mental health information and education so that you can make the best decisions about your mental health. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the winter blues or seasonal affective disorder. Now in this video, I'm going to be differentiating between the winter blues and seasonal affective disorder, which is an actual diagnosable mental health disorder. And the reason for that is because I want us to get a clearer idea on what might be a call for more support or extra help than perhaps some of the things that we'll be talking about today. But regardless of which one you might be experiencing, the rest of the video will be about what we can actually do to help ourselves manage these symptoms, regardless of which one you might be experiencing. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. As always, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment as you feel inspired to do so. But let's go ahead and talk about winter blues and seasonal affective disorder and how to manage it. Winter blues versus seasonal affective disorder. As usual, let's get on the same page about what we're actually talking about. As I mentioned, I want to differentiate between these two so that it's easier for you to be able to recognize when you might be requiring a little bit more support than just some coping tools. For the purposes of this video, the winter blues refer to just the emotional motivational changes that you might see for yourself as we enter the winter season. So now that we're getting less sun, the holidays are coming up, we just feel less motivated, less energy to do anything. It might be cold outside, so you just kinda wanna stay in and not really work. So you're struggling with some of that motivation, some of that energy. You might be feeling a little bit sad here and there, but for the most part, you're still able to function. You're still going to work, you're spending time with friends, Maybe not as much as usual, but you're still able to do some of these things and you're feeling fulfilled and overall feeling all right with a little bit of disruption. So that's the winter blues. You know, maybe you have like a sad day here and there, but for the most part, you feel like you can manage. Seasonal affective disorder is an actual diagnosable mental health disorder. And I will leave the criteria down below so that you can see a more detailed version of it. But some of the most common symptoms that we have with SAD or seasonal affective disorder is a low motivation and low energy, which we talked about that is congruent with the winter blues, but you might also notice that you are either sleeping more or maybe sleeping a little bit less, having trouble sleeping. So a disruption with your sleep. You might also notice that you're not just skipping like a few friends stuff, but you're skipping a lot, significantly different to what you would normally do socially. So there's a big change there. There might also be a big change in your appetite. And the sadness doesn't just come every so often. You're feeling sad most days, most of the day. You might even notice some crying spells here and there. Now again, there's more symptoms that I will leave down below and you can check them out, but these are the ones that will probably be the easiest to identify, the most common, and the ones that will definitely be letting you know that you might need a little bit of extra help. On top of the social piece where you feel like you might be isolating or retreating a little bit more than usual, you might also notice that you're not able to keep up with school or with work. and then it's not just like turning in things late and maybe something that you normally do, but it's starting to affect your work. It's really significantly starting to affect your life. And a quick note on seasonal affective disorder, I know that we're talking about it in terms of like the winter and that this is happening because we're talking about the winter blues and because as I'm filming this right now, it is currently December in California. However, seasonal affective disorder also happens for us during the summer. So look out for that video. If I haven't already posted it, um, we will be talking about 
summer blues and seasonal affective disorder and what it looks like in the summer. So let's talk about, regardless of which one you're experiencing, what you can do to help yourself. Practice self-compassion. I know, I know, I know. If, you, if you're subscribed to this channel and you have seen more than like two of my videos, you know that this is something that I talk about basically in every video. And I get it. I know it might seem like, okay, this is your answer to everything. And it is. Honestly, this is the basis for everything, for our mental health, for our well-being, is self-compassion. The moment that we can start to be kinder to ourselves, that's when we start feeling more motivated, more energetic. This is the pillar of the work that we do at my group practice because it is so important. There's a huge difference in progress when our clients start to be able to be compassionate with themselves. What does self-compassion look like? Self-compassion is marked by the way that we talk to ourselves, so that internal dialogue and the way that we treat ourselves, right? So some of the expectations that one might be having for ourselves, whether or not we are allowing ourselves to rest, to have those like meal breaks, to get that enough sleep that we need, all of that is practicing self-compassion. But the hardest piece for us usually tends to be the way that we talk to ourselves. So I really want you to think about self-compassion as that relationship that you have with yourself. Remember that there's nothing wrong with you if you're experiencing winter blues or sad. This is, especially for the winter blues, a lot of us experience that. It's just a normal reaction to our surroundings. There's less sun out, which means that we're getting less vitamin D, which means that it's probably going to get a little bit colder. We're not going to want to go outside. Yeah, you want to stay inside and be all cuddled up and warm. That makes sense. So some of this stuff is just normal. It's a normal reaction to what's happening. It's not because you're broken. It's not because something's wrong with you. A lot of people experience winter blues. And if it's starting to get to the point where you're feeling like it might be a little bit more of seasonal affective disorder, that's okay too. Because remember that your whole being, everything around you is also affecting your mental health. Our individual mental health is actually a response, right? It's the result of larger systemic things. Remember that you are also having to deal with any personal experiences that you might have had, particularly in the winter. So any losses, the holidays can be really hard when we are experiencing grief, when we're on our own. Um, the winter time can also be extra hard for us if we are also dealing with work issues, financial issues, what's going on in your community, in your society at large, and how are systems of oppression also adding to the stress that you're experiencing. So yeah, you might have normally just been experiencing winter blues, but if something's happening for you in your personal life or in your community, then that's also going to add to it. So it might kind of drive you a little bit more into the seasonal affective disorder realm. And that's okay because again, at the end of the day, it's you having a normal human reaction to your surroundings. So practice self-compassion, try not to judge yourself if you notice that these symptoms are coming up and practice some of the following things that we'll be talking about. Practice self-care. Self-care is closely connected to practicing self-compassion. When we can be compassionate with ourselves and understand, oh, I'm having a reaction to the fact that there's less sun out there. I'm getting less vitamin D. It's cold and I want to stay in. It's the holidays and I don't feel like being productive. I might be experiencing grief. I might be experiencing the effects of systemic oppression. So whatever else is going on for you, okay, that's the first piece. And the next piece is going to feed into your ability to practice self-care, which is why self-compassion is so important. And self-care, sure, definitely it looks like getting your hair done and getting your nails done, going to the spa. Go ahead, do that if that's what you're called to do. But self-care also looks like making sure that you are feeding yourself, taking those breaks and nourishing your body, making sure that you are drinking enough water, which can be really difficult to do in the winter, making sure that you are getting enough sleep. Meeting all of your basic needs is also self-care. That's self-love. Also ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? If I'm feeling some sadness, if I'm feeling some low energy, what can I do to make this moment easier for myself? And the question isn't how can I force myself to do these things that I should be doing or I'm supposed to be doing. 
The question is, what can I do to make this moment easier for myself? Maybe I need to lie down in bed and cuddle up for a few minutes or cry for a good 10, 15 minutes. Maybe I wanna stay in and watch a movie and that's okay. Give your body what it needs, make some tea, give yourself some love in that way. Allow your body to rest and give it what it needs. If you need to use your coping tools like journaling or coloring, going for walks, do that stuff as well. Reach out to safe people around you if you would like some company. And sometimes that looks like just telling our, our friends, hey, I don't feel the energy to go out, but maybe you can come over and we can watch a holiday movie or a scary movie or just hang out and listen to music. So reach out to the safe people and ask for the things that you need. This also means being kind to yourself at work. So if certain things and certain tasks are hard to complete, ask yourself, what can I do in this moment? If I can't complete this whole project, maybe I can break it down into little smaller bite-sized pieces to make it easier for myself. Light therapy, vitamin D, and antidepressants. Some people find it helpful to make use of these tools. So let's talk about light therapy very quickly. Light therapy is the use of a light box. It's a very bright box. It's usually about 20 times brighter than a normal light bulb. And it requires you or it involves you using this light box, usually in the morning times during the winter so that you're exposed to that light. Studies show that it can be helpful. I mean, it's not incredibly life-changing, but some people have reported a benefit from using these light boxes. If you have some sort of sensitivity in your skin or your eyes, it is important for you to talk to your doctor. Actually, it's important for you to talk to your doctor regardless. If you want to use any of the tools that I'm talking about in the next few minutes, talk to your doctor before you make any of these decisions and ask yourself if you can. I'm also gonna go ahead and leave some sources, excuse me, resources down below and sources that I used for some of the information that I'm providing you today. Vitamin D can also be a good option. People find it helpful to take some vitamin D supplements. And the reason for this is that because usually we get our vitamin D from the sun. Our body is able to create vitamin D and then help us keep up that, those energy levels and feeling a little bit happier. This is based on the idea that the um, low levels of vitamin D is what's contributing to our low mood or our sad symptoms. So some people do find it helpful. However, studies show that this is not as effective um, as other treatments like using antidepressants or psychotherapy. But again, it's important for you to ask yourself if this is something that you want to try. And as always, contact your trusted medical and mental health professionals before making any decisions. And lastly, we've got antidepressants. So antidepressants and taking antidepressants can be a very personal choice. Taking medication can be highly stigmatized in our communities of color, and it makes it really hard for us to get the help that we might really need. So I know that it might be difficult to think, do I really need antidepressants? And a lot might be coming up for you, and that's okay. If you are currently in therapy and are asking yourself, do I need antidepressants? Then you might find it helpful to process this with your therapist. Talk about your anxieties, talk about your fears, and it might help it it might help clear up whether or not this is the right decision for you. So talk to your therapist, talk to your doctor, as always, your trusted medical professionals. If you're not currently in therapy, then that is actually my next point. Psychotherapy. Of course, you might be thinking, yeah, you're a therapist. Of course, you're going to say go to therapy. But yes, yes, and there's a reason that I dedicate my whole life to it. There's a reason why I created a group practice from that and why we are here talking today, because I do believe in the power of psychotherapy. It is not a fix all for everything that's going on. As we understand and know mental health, it is a response to what's happening around us, to society and the way that things are built. So in order to really make significant change, we have to change systems. But in the meantime, we can still develop coping tools to help ourselves, and we can still develop strategies to make things a little bit easier for ourselves. And that's what therapy is for. 
Therapy is not to figure out what is wrong with you so that we can fix it, but instead to get a better understanding of who you are and what your needs are so that we can develop strategies to help you build a life that works for you. Working with a therapist that understands who you are, your culture, and doesn't just get it and like respect it, but actually integrates it into your treatment can make a world of a difference. So if you would like to work with a therapist, I've left some resources down below. If you're in California, working with my practice is also an option. Winter blues can be overwhelming and difficult sometimes to figure out what we can do to help ourselves. I hope that today's video was a good start to help you brainstorm some resources and strategies that you can start to do today. As always, give it a thumbs up and subscribe or comment as you feel inspired to do so. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.